So we received a message from April Moss. She uh, is a CBS Detroit whistleblower, a meteorologist, whose story became public in June of 2021. She says that she's uh, obtained an exclusive copy of a resignation letter from Dan Strack of Project Veritas and that she stands by James O'Keefe, currently working on the story. And uh, there is some personal information, so I'm not going to show the email, but I do have it. It says, today I sent the following email to the board of directors and leadership. Project Veritas Board of Directors, please take this email as notification of my resignation as executive director of Project Veritas and Project, Project Veritas Action. I am honored to have worked alongside some of the most dedicated and driven people I've ever met. I promise I gave it my all. I want you to know how much in the past 15 months have meant to me to work with and for you all has been incredible. The past four months have been the biggest challenge I suspect most of us have ever faced, at least in our professional careers. It is important to me that you know I tried my best. I know you did as well. I am sorry if I let you down. Why now? It's complicated. The truth is that I no longer know how to help. I will never forget any of you. You are amazing. The world needs you. Take care of each other. If I can, if I can ever be helpful to you at all, please reach out. I hope our paths cross again. And that's uh, Dan Strack. So uh, you know him, obviously. Yes, he 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 worked for Goldman Sachs, and he was the executive director that I hired uh, in 2022. 2022. So he's so uh, I don't know. Do you know anything about it? He's resigning. I mean, is this related I, to the lawsuit? That's, that's news to me. And, yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> You tell me what you think. I mean, I <laughs> I don't know if this. Uh, uh, so we're, we're we're receiving it from another reporter and whistleblower. Well, April was was a whistleblower for CBS News. She was a whistleblower like two years ago. She was a meteorologist and she went live on the air and said she's going to expose her own network. So she's, so she's gone on to do other reporting. We've not received confirmation from Project Veritas that he has resigned. So other than that. I don't know if you can say it's confirmed or whether or not we know for sure that he's actually resigned, but it seems plausible at the very least. I try to be a bit more careful on these things. Right. I'd rather have a statement from Project Veritas confirming, yes, he did resign. Right. It, it was so I'd have to see what April is there. Is there a picture or something or uh, there's there's a screenshot of the resignation email. Looks like from someone's very dirty laptop. <laughs> yeah. And then she just says she has obtained an exclusive copy of resignation letter uh, from Dan. Well, Strick. if that's true, then Dan Dan's resigned. I mean, the the, the number two guy at PB is, is is out. I don't know when, but um, I don't know it's, when it's either. Interesting timing. It's 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 interesting timing. I think it may be related to the lawsuit. I mean, the role of a the role of a board in a nonprofit is to hire and fire the CEO, which is what a board should do. What a board should not do is run the company. You yeah. can't you can't lead by committee. It doesn't work. Um, so that's very interesting timing, and there's obviously more to the story there. I think his resignation is is probably related to the lawsuit, and I have to imagine it. It look, if you work for Veritas, especially as Veritas is suing James O'Keefe, I mean your career is going to get nuked. Where are you going to go? Everyone in the media has has lied about you and called you propaganda, fake news, mm. and everything. So you're not going to CNN mm -hmm. now. Veritas is attacking its its founder who is beloved by the community. So you're basically saying if you keep working there, well they need there, there you, needs to be a, there needs to be a leader. Like people people there needs to be a, a person like from my understanding of companies is that uh, again, if there's a board, they hire and fire the guy at the top. So the question is who's in charge? You can't, you know, it's, it's, it's a over. board doesn't run, a board doesn't run a company. A board appoints right. the person that runs the company. There's nobody so, running it now. But there has to be. Right. There has to be so so I, you know are we are we are we taking issue with the reality that there needs to be someone at the top is that the issue because whoever whoever it is they're going to be faced with the same dilemma that I had I mean I I was you know I have to raise a lot of money let me go back to this like I have to pay lawyers to defend myself with this deal I'm not a, I'm not a wealthy man um for what I you know raising 20 25 million a year that's 100,000 a day 100 that's if you're working a 14 hour day, you know, that that's that's thousands of thousands of dollars an hour. So if I if I have to get from point A to point B, yeah, I'm gonna get in an SUV because I'm on the phone with sources while with my other phone on the on the phone with a donor, while with my toe on the phone with an employee while typing on my laptop, because that's what I do. And and you know, Why? you need someone who's gonna walk through walls. And and, and, and by the way, what is true? And this is a mistake. I will admit a fault of mine. On Monday morning, I don't ask how your weekend was. 
I don't say, how was your Thanksgiving? I probably, I probably did that twice. It, should a good leader ask you about that? Probably. But I'm so busy <laughs> trying to maze, raise money for all these freaking lawyers to defend myself from all these lawsuits because everyone wants me to fight back and stand, and, and stand on principle and stand on truth and not bend over and take it and settle. So there's a price, there's a price to pay to not bending over. Do you, do you think it was a mistake starting Veritas as a nonprofit? I don't regret anything in my life because everything that I have been through has taught me so much. In many ways, this is not a, a, a new story. There's nothing new under the sun, but in many ways, this is a new story. We're like, no one's ever gotten this far in the video game. I mean, I'm happy that I went through what I went through um, because I had, at the time, you know, I had to go through that. It was like, I was in a garage in a 300 square foot, like halfway house looking piece of shit garage with negative equity. And I'm like, well, I gotta make the video. But in order to make the video, I gotta buy a microphone. In order to buy the microphone, I gotta go get money. In order to get money, I gotta raise money. Okay, I put the video out. Okay, now I'm being threatened with lawsuits. I gotta raise money to pay lawyers. So what vehicle do I need to get to get the money to raise? Okay, I get into 51C3. Okay, to get a 51C3, I need a board. Let me get the board. It was yep. like, you know, it, it was a means to an end. Yeah. And, you know, the way, the way I see it now is, it's remarkable to see that over the span of, what, 13 years, you, uh, 12 and a half, 13 years, you build up to, to the point of $25 million a year. Seven million on lawyers. Seven, Seven million on lawyers. Mil on every, lawyers. On average, every year. Or, or That's why everyone loves last them. year, five, it was, it was in the last few years, four and a half, five, seven, seven million. We file public tax returns. So this is all public information. Yep. A 990 tax return. Seven million. I had lawyers making over a million a year, which is double my salary. You can look that up. Apparently some lawyers are still making some money. Off of Project Veritas. And I, and I got to raise money to, to defend myself here with the process is the punishment. How are you going to ra raise half a million bucks? People say, how do you do that? If you go to my Telegram page, you could, there's a link. There's a C4 that we have. I'm not on the board. I'll tweet it. You can donate. But Tim, <laughs> I could write 30 war stories. I was in court last September in D.C., federal court, civil trial. They sued me for breach of fiduciary duty, trespass, and some other things. Jury who, who, trial, who democracy partners, right, Bob right, Creamer. Right. It was that was the video inciting right. violence. Yeah. I was in a sensory deprivation chamber, aka a federal courtroom, for like a week and a half in Washington D.C., which is its own hellhole. Because when you're in D.C. for 24 hours, it's like a spiritual attack against you. Yeah, <laughs> and there's a, there's a place. jury, and there's all these lawyers, and I'm and I'm on the witness stand, and I'm sp and I and I could have probably settled the lawsuit. I don't know, for uh, you know, something, a couple hundred grand, maybe a hundred grand. But I chose to do the, what I thought was the right thing and not settle it and go to the Supreme Court if I had to. Millions. Yep. Mi over a million dollars spent. It was the right thing to do. But to do that, you have to, you have to walk through walls. You have, to, you have to do things that people don't want to do. Like my, Michael Jordan said, you know, leadership has a price. Yeah. And victory has a price. And, and uh, you know, are, are we willing to pay it? You, want, you know why um, news like what you do is so fleeting? I mean, I think you do, but I, for the audience, the rhetorical you. I've, I've told the story before because I've, I've encountered this literally talking to heads of media. You get a guy who comes into, uh, uh, you get a journalist or a, a media guy, and he goes to the investors and says, I want to to do this investigative reporting and expose corporate and governmental malfeasance. I need investment capital to get started. And the venture capitalists and the business guys go, awesome, fantastic. This sounds really, really good. So uh, what's our return? And you say, well, you know, this kind of news does really, really well. We get millions of views, 10 million views, 20 million views. It's amazing. And we can sign, sign up people to be members, support our work. So, you know, we could be looking at a very lucrative enterprise and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but time, timeline wise, when are you going to get the story? What's, when, when's the first big scoop? Right. And you say, well, I don't know. We have to do the investigation. And they say, how much does that cost? That's going to cost $300,000 for the yep. preliminary investigation. And they say, and how much do I get back from that? Well, we don't know. We're, we're investigating a story. We have no guarantee the story pans out the way we think it's going to. That's right. And they say, I am not going to invest millions of dollars or even 300,000 unless you tell me when I get my money back. Then someone else walks in the room and says, don't listen to that guy. I'm going to launch a news company and I'm going to get you a $2 million return in three years. And they go, oh, wow, how are you going to do it? 
we're going to publish clickbait garbage nonsense and complain about people's politics. Yeah, because and it's they go cheap. bang. Because it, you worked for Vice, right? That's right. Versus Shane Smith. Yep. It's funny, Shane Smith, my executive assistant's name is Shane Smith with a Y, not an any. And Vice's uh, unique value proposition was, we go there. I think and I saw a billboard in New York Times, we, or Times Square, we go there. Yeah, something so, like that. So I, their unique value proposition was they actually go on the location they're reporting on. And then <laughs> around 2014, 15 is when things started to shift. And they said, well, you know, and then they started relying, presumably, this is my opinion, more on ridiculous clickbait because, articles. And so this is a really important point. Investigative reporting is like outrageously expensive, like beyond what people can fathom. Because even sending people like flights, hotels, you know, it, you know, it, it costs a lot more nowadays. Lawsuits. I mean, we're talking, you're right, hundreds of thousands of dollars to do one story. So if you're a businessman, if you're if you're a venture capitalist and you want to make a profit on this, good luck. Good luck you know, to you. You know what our budget was for uh, a three day shoot? We got a story. Boom, breaking. There's 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 civil unrest happening in this country. The president may get ousted. We're sending a crew down. Fifty grand. It's a bigger story. It's going to take a week or two weekends. A hundred, two hundred grand, and that was cheap. You've got salaries, camera equipment. Travel, you need, you got to have insurance on a $30,000 camera, not no to mention, question. Le, not to mention lawsuits. Legal, you got people who are going to be detained entering the country. You got people who are going to be pulled out by cops because they're covering this stuff. You've got four people have to go there. You've got security requirements. You've got security briefings. You've got health. If you're going to Egypt, you got to go in for all these different vaccines. You, 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 you If you're a businessman and your purpose is in the night, I, I wrote a book about this called American Muckraker. In the 50s, 60s, and 70s, there was integrity. There were bosses with what I call balls. Maybe you prefer huevos <laughs> or testicular fortitude, whatever, huevos, eggs, <laughs> balls. <laughs> bosses with balls, okay? I'm just going to say balls. And the people in the comments be like, well, I don't have balls. I'm a woman. Okay, whatever. <laughs> What's a woman? <laughs> 2023. <laughs> whatever. Games, people had balls. They would say, you know what? I'm, you know, the cigar and the fedora. I'm going to spend that money because it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Doing the right thing is expensive. It comes at a cost, but it, it comes at a human cost. But it was also to a certain degree vanity, to a certain degree, because you had people running these institutions saying, we're going to be the best news organization that's ever been. And that means going there. That means going doing the there. work. And, and we the, can, we can, but my philosophy was always since day one, day one, my, my core value, my tenant was whatever it does cost, I will get that money to do that thing. So that was my, that was my, my raison d'etre was I'm going to go do this project or I'm going to have the, I'm going to go get the story. If it costs me 1.4 million to get it, I'll find a way to get the money so that I can do the thing. Now it's let's get the money, forget the thing. Let's focus on the pursuit of that thing over there. Journalism is anathema to the commercial imperative. Yes. And you know what I think happens with, let's just say, insert hypothetical media nonprofit. After a certain amount of years, people get involved and they start saying, hey, we're making $25 million a year. That story is a little bit risky. I kind of like that's the way big, things are going. That's big money. Now, yep. I never thought of it that way because I work my, I, I, mean, I work so hard. I mean, I, I work so hard to, to raise that and I never celebrate it. I never celebrate getting a check. I only celebrate getting the story. And if someone on my team says, oh, you got, you got, a, you got a check for a hundred grand. I said, no, we celebrate when we get the stuff. When we publish the story, that's when we celebrate. But yeah, I mean, I guess you could think about it and you look at the numbers and go, wow, that's some big money. Well, wow, I can I can do that. I can I can do that. The hell with that guy. He doesn't know anything. He doesn't work in private equity. He doesn't know how management. He's not he didn't get a Harvard MBA. I'm gonna go in there and do that. I I bet. It's it it's it's it was very painful. Um, but it was necessary for me to get to the next evolution of what I'm about to do. I would be willing to bet that the near absolute majority of people who have given to Project Veritas, if they heard a story about James O'Keefe boarding a private jet to fly down for a vacation in Miami Beach with a nice suit and sunglasses, they'd be laughing and clapping, being like, this is exactly what the man deserves it. This is success. This is victory. If someone like James O'Keefe can live in style with the work that he does, we're on the right track. So the idea that you simply driving in a car was somehow offensive or, or detrimental to the organization is, is laughable to me. What I was saying before is, look, if you launched a private company and from the get go and you brought in members and you ran it as a membership 
you know, uh, like like you're doing now with OMG. You'd, you'd, you'd post a picture of yourself, top G, getting on a private jet with a Bugatti or whatever, and people would be going like, yes! Like, not only are we winning, but James is flaunting his success to show all of the corruption and to inspire young people that there's a path to success. Well, Elon to Musk, Elon Musk says the private transportation is the one thing that can maximize your time because you can have two meetings or three meetings in a day. Like there was one oh, time absolutely. I, I woke up in New York, I had a meeting, I went to Wisconsin, I had a meeting, and I had Arizona, I had three meetings in one day. And you're, you're, you're running a company, you have to, you know, mm. you're, you're, you're raising, spending 100,000 a day. Your time, this is basic economics. It's, it's so valuable that it, it, it becomes imperative for you to, to get from this po point to this point. Ob obviously, everyone knows that. But Tim, we did a story on, on OMG. Speaking of a new company, we did a story on um, at the FEC. We knocked on doors. And, you know, we just knocked on doors. It, it, it's, it was expensive. We had to go to Maryland. We got to go here. We got to go there. But now citizens are knocking on doors. They're inspired. They're running around the country. What can I do? It's, it's a fraction of the budget of these media corporations, and we're still getting results. So this is what people need to realize. The path to luxury, wealth, comfort, high society has typically been for a long time garbage. It has been people going on TV with big fake butts. <laughs> in, and that's fine if you like it. I got no beef. But I, I've always asked myself, how come firefighters don't get paid more money? Oh, it's like, oh, we can't put it in the budget. We can't, well, but police salaries are super low. The, 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 these leftists want to abolish the police. They complain about cops. Like, well, cops don't get paid very well. It's not a job people want to do and feel good and safe doing. It's high risk. Yet, super sports play, athletes, celebrities get paid ridiculous amounts of money. And the person who is in a movie posts a video of themselves boarding a private jet with a, you know, a fancy Dom Perignon or something. And everyone says, if I want to succeed and have wealth and luxury, you have to be a vapid there's pop a lot, culture salesman. There's a lot more here that I could say that I'm not going to, because I really, sorry, I, there's a lot more here. I, I don't want to get into the, um, there's some things I could tell you that would like make you go, what? <laughs> but I don't, I don't want to be goaded into going there because I think that's what the, in, the the intent is here to try to get me to do. But there's there was something about like, you know, people should be making the same money or there shouldn't be a, a disparity of, of, you know, you know, the CEO shouldn't be, you know, having a, a different form of security versus this old guy here. Well, well, this guy's getting attacked and his you know, life's threatened. So you, you, do we want to get paid equally? So some of this doesn't make a lot of, a lot of actual sense. Um, and, um, institutional capture. Man. I mean, the Southern they district of New York, us. the Southern <laughs> district of New York is where the FBI raided me. So now I'm being sued in the SDNY, a jury trial, in order to issue an injunction against me to stop exposing corruption um, by the organization that I founded, which is which mission is the state of mission is to expose corruption, and they've issued a injunction to stop the founder from exposing corruption. They have issued an injunction, or or I'm sorry, they, they issued they, they, they filed a lawsuit to one. to request the federal courts to to stop. Um, investigative reporting. Like I always say, like if you brought this stuff to Netflix, they would like laugh at you. <laughs> like, this is crazy shit. Um, but just another day in my life. Just uh, to wrap up my last point, we should be happy to see the you, James relaxing on a private jet. We should be like, you do good work. You stand up for something honorable. You help this country. You get rewarded for doing it. Instead, and I don't, I just mean, I don't mean to just put this on you. It's something everybody, everybody has in their mind that if you're going to do nonprofit work, you should be poor. And not literally every single person, but I used to do nonprofit fundraising. Mm -hmm. And I have to explain to people, they're like, did you hear the CEO of that nonprofit gets paid a million dollars? And I was like, good. Wow. Which, which nonprofit? I didn't just, know you did that. Oh, I worked for, I did fundraising for a whole bunch. Uh, I did, I did fundraising for Greenpeace. I worked for the, the PERG groups. I worked. Oh, that's right. A handful yes. of others. Some of those are 501c4s. He had some hidden of them cameras are, there. He actually saw you working. You would be surprised. <laughs> it's actually a good place to probably have some. I think you're right, Tim. I think I think there's nothing wrong with taking a, a helicopter. I mean, taking a helicopter home. I, I know I know people who do that. I won't name them, but that's that's a standard industry practice if you're a 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollar company. 
you get home so you can get a good night's sleep, so you can wake up fresh and go to work and go to meetings and go travel. But there, it's just part of it's just part of business. I think the issue is that you know? people look at things like hopping on a private jet or a private car as luxury instead of necessity. Well, what is the root of all socialism? What is the uh, socialism? Envy. envy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Envy. What is socialism really about? It's about envy. Oh, it's yeah. not. It's about look. hating the guy who's achieving something and successful, tearing him down. When in reality, what we should be doing is lifting everybody up. But my, my point is this, it's it's misplaced too. So I get a request so like, hey, Tim, we want you to fly out here and come on this show. And I'm like, okay, I only fly first class. That's not because I'm like, I deserve. To exactly. Do it's because, okay, I'm going to be working 16 hours today. I can catch a red eye after work, but I got to go to bed. I'll sleep on the plane, which barely works. And I wake up feeling like crap, but I'm willing to do that. It if sounds you like, it sounds ticket. like envy to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's an envy thing. Thanks for watching this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at TimCast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.